Right then, the build of the Wingnut Wings Gotha. Um, we've done the floor and now I want to look at the various different bulkheads that we have in the cockpit. Now some of these are double sided um, and we'll see both sides um, and others are not. Um, so these three aren't, those two are. Um, and now normally my method of painting these would be to use oil paints. So using a combination of uh, browns and reds you can do all sorts of wood effects. Um, the one thing um, that is a positive of these is that you've got a slow drying time which means you can manipulate them quite leisurely until you're really really happy with the effect and it's easy to clean off. The downside of these things is that they have a really long um, drying time which means um, uh, unless you seal them with a varnish and stuff like that you've got to leave them for a few days. So I'm going to try something new. I'm going to try using oil brushes. So these have been um, painted in the same way as the um, floor pan was um, and we've used the same um, new wood um, colour on top of a white primer and you can see we've put a little bit of uh, modulation in there as well so uh, you know it, it it's got a little bit of unevenness in the paint already and now what I'm gonna do is try these oil brushes on it they have been sealed I use the um, new a stand varnish the same as we, we we've used in the build so far and I've got three different colors of oil brusher that I'm going to try because I'd like them not to be all uniformly the same colour. Let's assume they didn't come from the same batch of wood. They might have been made in different factories even. So I've got dark mud, dark brown and earth. So the plan is that we'll dab with the oil brusher and then we will manipulate the paint using some packing foam. Um, so it's quite easy just drag it along in the direction you want and we can then use a paintbrush to put um, variation in and, and knots and all that sort of stuff should we wish to. So uh, the oil brusher should give us enough time to manipulate it and because we've used the A stand varnish we should be alright in terms of uh, time to mess around and if we don't like it we can just take it all off. So I'm going to start using this big panel, um, as I've not done it before, that gives me the most space for messing around here and making sure that we we get the technique right before we try some of the more trickier ones. Um, so I'm going to start, these should all be dark wood according to the instructions, so I'm going to start with dark brown. And I have just given that a good shake up so just going to put that on and see how that goes so you can see I've just dotted it at the top and Okay, need a little bit more. I think it'd be easier to actually hold it. Okay, so that gives us the start point, making sure that it's gone off all of our edges. I'm just going to grab, I actually want a brush with an uneven
this is one of my stippling brushes that I actually use for streaking. Um, so I'm just going to drag that along. Okay, that's not looking too bad. Let's see if we can. Now, ordinarily with oil paint, I think it's perhaps a little bit easier to manipulate it than this is proving to be, but we'll give it a go. So just by changing the direction of the of the scratches, we can give a sort of um, an impression of a weave um, and, a, and a shake in the wood. Right, now one thing we can do, I'm going to try and put a knot in and see how that goes. So I've just got a small amount of paint on my oil brush here. Um, and we'll put a knot in, say, I'm uh, just thinking about where things are going. Seat is there, got a camera there. So here seems like a good point. So just put a small dab um, of the oil brush of paint on there. Um, and I'm just going to use a fine brush to spread that out. So bear with me. So using a fine brush, I'm just going to spread that out a little bit. And then we can move there we have a small knot so I think that's probably okay for a first attempt now we can build layers up here so we'll put a tint on it and then we might put some uh, more overlay on it depending on how it comes out. So I'm going to carry on with this process on these other ones. One of the things that's important is to go in different directions and I'm going to use a couple of different colours and we'll see how they all come out in the end.
Okay, um, I, I've, it's uh, a few hours actually since I painted on the wood effect. Um, you, don't, you don't need to leave it that long, but it's just um, how long it's been before I could get back to the desk. Uh, and what I want to do is give these all a little tint. So I'm using um, the um, crystal uh, range of paints from Megamo for this. So crystal orange for these um, uh, darker ones. And then I'm going to do uh, the crystal red on this one. Um, and then we're going to go back and do a little bit more on them just to, to finish them off. Um, so I'm going to just remove these while we do them one at a time. Um, this one, which is the uh, first bulkhead we're building up, I've just put a little bit of this um, uh, p um, intelligent panzer putty, masking putty in, uh, and you just put a small bit in and then using a cocktail stick, manipulate it. But it does very slowly settle, so um, I I've got to sort of act relatively quickly. So that's the first one we're going to um, spray. So, make sure I've got no debris in the area. Um, I, I've taken my paint cup off because I'm only going to be using a couple of drops. Right, and we'll just give this um, a quick bash over. What I'm going to do is get a little bit of blue tack just to um, stop me blowing it about. There we go, it just adds a little bit of a tint. We're gonna let that um, dry. You just give it a light mist in. You don't wanna to go too heavy. It starts to pool um, if you put too much on. So just a little bit at a time. So that's our first one um, done. Do the same with this one. This is the one that mounts the uh, um, pilot seat. Go. So I'm at just about one bar on um, the pressure on my uh, airbrush here, um, and I'm using um, 0.2 needle. Now this one has two uh, two sides. We need to we need to do both sides of this one. Um, so we're going to do one side, let it dry, and then come back to it in a sec. Perhaps should have done that one first because um, it's the last of the yellow ones. Okay, this last one we're doing in the crystal red, and you'll see there is a little subtle difference by doing it that way. See, it's giving us a warmer, sort of cherry-like look. 
So that's my wood effect done on this panel. Some of the others I want to do a little bit more with. So you can see it's all about um, working out what effect you want. You've got to be clear in your mind what you want first. So um, this is where the little seat's going to go and uh, the camera and uh, magazines and things. So that'll be a nice backdrop for those um, stronger colours. Whereas some of the others I want to have um, different wood effects on. So uh, we're going to go back and do various different things on the, on the others. We're in the interests of having some variation in the panels I'm just um, changing the colour of this other than this this little wooden box here which has a uh, what looks like a clock face goes on it um, so I'm using um, a little bit of um, burnt sienna um, oil paint just to um, put um, a, a sort of a deeper dark wood um, look onto this particular one so it's a very simple process um, it's very similar to what we've done with the oil brushes. We paint it on, but unlike the oil brushes where we spotted it, we uh, paint the whole area, making sure that we've got a nice even coverage all the way over. And then using a brush, we, we simply drag the brush across, which gives us our grain effect. And you can see there. Um, that looks quite authentic. The trick is not to, when you put your um, shakes and weaves in, the, the little undulations in the in the wood grain, not be too extreme with them. It's nice, gentle. You've got to remember the scale. Um, yeah, that looks that looks all right. And then we can seal that with a, a, a varnish when we're done. Um, giving it a bit of um, crystal uh, orange just to um, improve the hue a little bit. Um, and that gives it a bit of a satin effect as well, um, but it also seals it, so uh, I'm not moving oil around anymore. Um, what I want to do now is go over with a different colour oil brusher. So I think we used the, the mud on this one. I'm now going to go over in the earth, which should give me two contrasting grain colours um, and, and quite a different look again. So let's do that. The same process as before. We're simply going to um, dot it and then take it off with our um, packing sponge. So there's the sponge we're going to use. It's important that we do this in the same direction as we've done previously. And you can see the contrast that we're getting already. Uh, we need a little bit more on there though. So just to prove to you that if you're not happy with what you've done or you, you take it a step too far and you, you think, oh, it was looking good and now I've ruined it, you can simply strip it back to your starting point. Um, I've simply wiped this down. Most of it you, I could wipe off. A little bit of white spirit um, just to help in one or two other areas. Um, and there you go, stripped off. So um, I can... Give that a new coat of paint and start again and nothing lost.
Okay, so we're on with the process of building up the very first bulkhead um, right in the nose of the fuselage. Um, and here we're starting to pull together the little shelf, which is a separate part that goes into the bulkhead. And there's masses of detail into this shelf. So we've got two books that we need to paint at the back. Um, and then we've got um, like a little um, folder which has got some pens in. Um, one of the books has a decal, the folder with the pens in has a decal. Um, and then we've got a little separate compass that we need to slot in there um, that also has a decal. There's decals to add on the batteries that, that go underneath. And there's also a, a clock face decal. I will come back to the decals in a bit, but right here I'm painting the second book. Uh, now, honestly, you can do these any colour you like. I went for a blue because it was very different to anything else that was in there um, for the first book, um, as you saw. And you can see it really stands out. And then we've gone for a sort of a olive drab type um, colour. That's because the next book's got a lot of writing on it on this little decal and I wanted that to feel a bit more formal and military um, somehow. So uh, we went with that colour. Again, it's a, a contrasting colour to everything else that's going on there um, and will stand out as a detail in its own right. The compass that goes in front of it will be black and the little pouch that's got the pens in and the notepad is uh, going to be done in uh, a leather colour, um, which will blend in a little bit with the, with the wood, but it will be standing out as something di uh, different. So here we're painting in the leather of the little pouch. Um, I use my preferred light leather colour of Humbrol 62. Uh, just always seems to work for me for some reason. The pens were then individually painted in uh, carefully. Um, I used black and red, I seem to recall. So this next item is one of two batteries that go underneath the shelf um, near the floor. I'm not quite sure um, what these power packs were used for, to be honest, but they're in a, a metal case 
that um, so the black bit is the battery and then the, there's a, like a little case with a, um, a locking arm in front of it and then on top there's a little um, knob with a with a, a bit of string on from what I could see so we decided to pick all of those out in, in different colours now the instructions tell you to do the the whole thing in the green and then the battery is black but looking at um, some of the reference pictures they'd included in the instructions and their own um, subsequent picture of it fully painted um, it was definitely um, some form of gunmetal on the top so that's what I went with and then that made um, a little bit of white string on the back that was moulded in um, stand out a little bit more and the whole thing was finished off with a, a couple of decals so looked pretty good when it was done. And whilst I was painting those um, little knobs on the top in burnt steel, I thought, well, I might as well use that for the press stud on our little pouch on the shelf. So that's what we did. The pages of the book were picked out in an off-white colour, um, just made it stand out and be clearly um, a book and, and nothing else and then we could use that to finish off those battery packs. Though this is at the back and will be very difficult to see, I couldn't help myself. I had to put that little detail in just because I knew it was there. So this is our uh, wooden bulkhead, um, now it's time to detail up the material, so that sort of grey green um, is the colour that was called out in the instructions and it's some form of material, you can see there it's being pulled taut um, and it also goes behind um, on that little um, rectangular um, cut out there. So um, we need to, to uh, paint in and highlight the creases. So that's what I'm doing there. I went with doing the dark shadow in the bottom of the creases first. And then we'll give it a little bit of um, um, a wash out and then we'll put some lighter tones on it.
So the material strip at the bottom has absolutely no definition in it at all. It's just totally smooth and um, I didn't like the idea of it just being a solid colour. So I decided to go around the edges with um, a dark colour to try and put a little bit of definition in, uh, some shadow. Um, and then we went lightly over it to add a little bit of unevenness in the colour of the material. Uh, so you can see that's what I'm doing here. I've gone around the edges twice to try and uh, darken it compared to the rest. Um, and then I thought um, we probably need to put some lighter colour in. So we can start removing some of that and just making it look uneven and that will help with that feeling of definition. So using a slightly lightened um, colour I went in the direction that I imagined the, the material was being pulled taut uh, and just went over that and added a little bit of uh, variation into the shading whilst the darker colour was already wet so we got a bit of mix it blended in naturally um, and it just looked like um, there was some difference in the material. Using the same lighter colour to do the highlights um, on the ridges, on the material that does have a texture um, for exactly the same reason, it's just accentuating what's there um, and I think it looks quite good when it comes out. So this is our first decal going on, um, it's going on to the compass. There are two compass in the cockpit, one near the pilot and one near the gunner. And I have to say, cartograph decals, they behaved exactly as I expected. No issues whatsoever and virtually no carrier film. So I did put a little bit of setting solution down uh, before we put the decal down, you saw me doing that. 
uh, and then we just squeegeed it out but actually it sat there really quite nicely. So the second decal is a little clock face that goes on our first bulkhead here. Um, it's a, got lovely detail on the decal um, and it will be visible when the whole thing's closed up. So this is just where the gunner's ring is right at the front of the uh, nose of the fuselage there. So I'm guessing that the gunner had several rolls, not just that of the gunner. But there was one thing kept bothering me all the time that I'm building this. There is no rope supplied. And it's a Navy aircraft. There must have been rope on there. There absolutely must have. So I need to find a space to put some rope. Now we did mention it before, um, but there is a decal that goes on this book here. Um, it, it's white with squiggly lines on it, almost makes it look like a clipboard. Um, it was a, a beautiful little decal. Um, you have to make sure you get the orientation right. If you put it on upside down, it looks odd. Um, but um, yeah, so I decided to go with placing it in the center of the book, like maybe it was the log book for, or something like that. Now, believe it or not, there's even a decal for the page that's visible from this little um, book. And it's cut to shape to go around the four pens and pencils in there. Again, with no decal film to get in the way, it's not going to sit on top of those pens and pencils. It's going to sit in between them. It was an absolutely incredible decal and it went down beautifully. Hats off to Winnut Wings. Absolutely brilliant. Now when I came to fit the four decals that go on the two batteries, that's when I realised I'd made a mistake. And I hadn't realised at first, but you can see the little arm that goes across the front of the battery. I have painted it so that it is metal with an opening in the middle, because there's a depression there. So I assumed you could see the battery through it. But when I looked at some reference pictures, because the decals looked odd, I realised that it, was, it is just that, a depression but the arm is solid. So at some point I need to just go in and uh, paint in the uh, black that's in the middle of those two arms back to the green that the rest of the frame and arm is made of. But again, the decals went down perfectly and not having to trim away any carrier film, uh, it was just a lovely experience. And I like doing decals anyway, but these were lovely.
So I've used glue and glaze from Deluxe Materials to make a lens, but uh, you could use a PVA glue or any sort of glazing product um, for this. Um, I, I just prefer this one. I think it, it deals with bigger gaps better than some other products. Um, but in this instance, it's quite a small area, so it was just a case of filling the area and making sure it was nice and level while it dried. Um, my autofocus didn't like it so much. Easier to put the two batteries in place now, and you can see there is some paint there, but because we're using uh, a hot glue, it's not an issue. There's no paint on the inside on the battery, so it will bond nicely enough. I felt it was easier to put the batteries on now before we put the um, shelf in, so um, you'll have better access to aligning the shelf in, in its slot once the batteries are on. Equally, I thought it'd be easier to put some shadow and grime uh, around the um, little wooden clock mounted on the bulkhead before the shelf went in as well. So, as you can see, we use the um, Africa Corpse wash for this. Um, it goes very nicely with the woods and it just um, highlights the fact that uh, a machine that's constantly maintained and kept clean will still get um, some build-up of muck around the edges. Um, I, and it just highlights the uh, the areas a little bit. So um, a nice little product for wood is the um, Af Africa Corpse Wash. It works very well. And we simply went all the way around the edges very carefully with a detailing brush uh, and just building that up as we wanted so that um, it stood out. And I think it looks quite good. The shelf was put in place and then glued in from the backwards. It's a good tight fit. The instructions have you remove a little um, tab that does get in the way. So uh, probably an afterthought when they were test building. Um, but when it's all done, it's quite a busy little bulkhead we've done. The bulkhead could then be glued into place at the end of the floor section that we had created in the last video. Um, I was interested to see how the contrast would be between the pale wood that we did uh, deliberately on, on the floor and the darker wood that we're uh, aiming to do with the, some of the bulkheads. Uh, I want them all slightly different. Um, but the fit was lovely, despite my effort. Once I'd worked out that gravity was my friend. The final part to add was that compass, um, which fits in the hole in the little wooden tray there. So um, we plopped that in and then we glued it from underneath where it wouldn't be visible. Uh, again, we're using a hot glue. I put it in with a micro brush so it just went into the um, recess no one's going to ever see that that was glued in. Um, and it looks really nice and busy. I used the same US vehicles wash that we'd used on the uh, floor um, just to put a little bit of shadow and grime effects on the batteries. Um, they're the same colour so it just gives me continuity uh, throughout that build and links it all in. So there we are done the next step in stage one, the front bulkhead. Another five pieces completed. <laughs> it sounds bonkers. There's a lot of work in there and most of it as you saw was detail painting um, and painting the wood takes a little bit of time. But in the end uh, I had a lot of fun. And I think it really, really looks the part. So I'm totally enjoying this build.